Hi, this is Nataki. Hi, this is Nataki of New Business Solutions. Today we're going to go through the basic functionality, navigation, and use of WorkSnaps. Uh, WorkSnaps is a uh, productivity tracking tool. Uh, there are two ways to use it. One, you can install it on your desktop so that it will live track uh, what websites you're logged into, what you're working on, uh, in your overall productivity. Uh, if you don't use it that way, you can also use it to log manual time. Uh, it integrates with a number of different programs. Uh, there are other videos on that. This is really just going to show you what you will see and what to expect and how to use it once you log into the site. So let's minimize this and go to the site. So uh, this <clears throat> assumes that you have already gone through and created your username and password. Uh, so when you log in, the first place that you land is here on the uh, dashboard. On the dashboard, you can see how much time you've logged, um, what other people are doing, the history over the last seven days, uh, and you can do some things to drill down whether you want summary or detail uh, and, and really get more insight into what you're working on. Uh, let's go through the menu. The dashboard is first. The track time is where you can see time that has been automatically logged in on your uh, desktop, uh, but it's also where you can edit that time. So if, for example, you worked for two hours, but you took a 15 minute break and you need to remove that, uh, you can use the, the tools here to, for example, delete time uh, or to modify time. Uh, because we're using the browser version for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you add time manually. Uh, in order to even begin to add time, the first thing that you need to do is have a project, uh, and then you need to uh, have a user and an activity. So just look, let's look at that really quickly. Uh, under Manage, uh, you can create a project. You can name the project anything you want. Uh, once you click Create Project, uh, you can add a description. This is helpful just so you remember, uh, just in case you give it a a not meaningful name, you can remember what it is. And it's also what you will use to select that project from the desktop version in the future. Uh, if you've already created a project, you can go here to edit it and uh, save there. Uh, here on the left-hand side, you can uh, make changes, add users, you can add tasks to a project. So, new task. So you can be general on the task or you can be specific. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, with everything that you do here, you want to uh, definitely hit submit or create so that it actually creates. Uh, once you've done that, you'll be able to see what you've added. Uh, here is where you manage users so you can change your name or your email address. Uh, and then manage templates. We're not really going to go into that. Um, but if you were working with a lot of different projects, uh, managed templates is what you could use for that. So now that you've seen how uh, the menu bar works, let's go back and track time. So first thing you can do is pick a date. Um, obviously you wanna pick days in the past, um, so, or times in the past. So let's just click on today. And uh, because we only have one project, it defaults to the one project, uh, but you do want to pick a project. And then you want to add time. Uh, before you add time, you also want to make sure that your time zone is selected. If not, uh, it may look like you're selecting 9 a.m., but if you're in the wrong time zone, you know, maybe it's set for California and you're selecting uh, 6 a.m., and so your reports will not be right. So make sure you've selected the right time zone. <clears throat> so we clicked on add time. And as you can see here, uh, it, you can't pick future times. It will only let you pick past times. 
So let's say we worked at, from 9 a.m. and I can individually click on these, but I can also click all and it'll select all the slots in that hour. The slots are uh, broken into 10 minute increments. And you can also select part of partial times. So let's say that I, you know, worked for those first 20 minutes, uh, but then I took a break and I only worked the last 10 minutes of that hour. And then I worked uh, here and then I stopped. So I've selected my times. It's really, really important that you click next there are a couple of things that you have to do before this will actually save. So select a task. I created that task and I'm going to choose it. It's my only option. Then what's going to be super important is that I write a meaningful note. So you don't want to put something big like I worked on marketing internship activities. You want to be very specific. I made phone calls to person number one, two, three, four, and five. I uh, wrote emails. I created the article for X and I edited the video for Y. So <clears throat> that is specific enough that it shows what the time was used for. Then you want to click next and super, super important. You want to click confirm uh, until you click confirm. Uh, the time is not logged, and so uh, some people make the mistake and just kind of close out of this browser, but you don't want to close out here. Uh, you want to close out from here once you've finished all the steps. And what you'll see is all of the time is noted offline, uh, so it does look different than if you did manual time, but it does keep track of it. And then you want to make sure that you have that for each day or each block of time. And this is, of course, good for um, keeping track of your time in real time. But if for some reason you need to go back, you can always uh, click here and look at a previous month and edit any of your time for, you know, in this case, it's July. And you can see what has happened uh, in, in previous periods. So uh, you can also toggle here by date. Uh, and if you have more than one task, you can uh, select and switch tasks and filter by tasks. Uh, so with that, uh, now that we have some time in our report, uh, either created manually or uh, through the desktop app, let's click on reports just to show how you actually uh, make this one consolidated piece of information. So you can elect to do a report for the day, week, month, or you can do a custom range. So in this case, let's say I wanted to do from uh, July 1 until 831, which of course it won't have any time for the future dates, but uh, I'm gonna update that report for that custom time range. And now I can go here to save as static report, and I can give it a name, it defaults to just static report and uh, today's date and time. Uh, this is the Julian date, which is a four digit year, a two digit month followed by a two digit day. So I'm gonna click save. And from there, you can click on static reports and you can display the report that you just created. Uh, you can rename it. Uh, you can also get the permalink so that way you can share this report with other users or uh, anyone who you want to see uh, what you've documented as far as your time goes. Uh, and then you can, of course, go back to quick reports and create another report. So for the most part, that is how you navigate uh, uh, work snaps uh, in terms of creating manual time, looking at your uh, automatic time. Uh, creating reports, filtering information, uh, and everything uh, that we will, for the most part, be using. So if you have any other questions, you can, of course, contact me, Nataki, at New Business Solutions, and I will see you in the next tutorial video. Thanks for watching. And for more tips, you can go to newbusinesssolutions.com or check out the other tutorial videos on our YouTube channel.